So yeah, we got it working. BM180 um, GPS unit, we got it working in this quad where it wasn't before. I'm really, really happy about that. Oh, uh, hello there and welcome back to my channel. Like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Anyway, so how did we get the BM180 working in this? A couple of things that I did that you might want to think about, plus one or two other things that you could consider doing if what I suggest now doesn't work for you. To be honest, the BM180 is known to be not the best GPS unit, and there's a few that have just come on the market. Yeah, they're a lot more money, but they prove to be a lot more effective and a lot more reliable. For what I want it for, though, with this, it's perfect. I'm not doing any return to home or any of that sort of stuff. I just wanted to have it as, as a position to show how far I'm going, how fast I'm flying. I might put the height on there at some point as well, um, and the direction of homes. So if I'm flying away and I get lost as which way is home, the arrow points me home, which it did, as you can see from the video we've already shown. So how did we do it? So what did we do? Well, we did two things, as we said. We'll mention some more in a minute. Firstly, um, the first thing we did is, is really down to this all-in-one flight controller ESC um, from Gemku. Card coming up there, and that's my review. Anyway, on this particular all-in-one flight controller ESC, it's got a number of pads for powering different things, VTX, camera, etc. It's got a couple of 5 volt pads, it's got a 9 volt pad, and it has a 4.5 volt pad, and that's very useful because the 4.5 volt pad will start passing power onto whatever's connected to it when the flight controller um, ESC is connected to a USB um, system, so your computer, or in this case, when we're out in the field, like a power brick like this. It doesn't have to be massive, it doesn't have to have a massive capacity, um, but as long as it can do USB power, 5 volts, it will then power up that particular pad when it's connected. So that then turns on the flight controller, and it turns on whatever's connected to that 4.5 volt pad, like a BM180. BM180 then talks to the flight controller, it can see it, it, they can communicate electronically, as they do, and then it can say, well, I've seen the flight controller, I'm now going to start looking for satellites, and that's what it does. It starts looking for a satellite connection. Now, with the BM180, one of the problems is it takes so long to do. It can take 15, 20 minutes to find even a few satellites. And if you've got a LiPo plugged in, the VTX is getting hot, it needs to be connected to a receiver, um, otherwise it starts beeping, you can't fly any other models, you just have to sit there and wait. But if we connect up our power brick, well then the BM180 is getting power, it's looking for satellites, the receiver's not on, so it's not complaining that it's not getting a signal, the beeper's not going off because that's not getting power. Um, the VTX isn't on, it's not getting hot and causing other problems and issues, like electronic interference, which can affect our GPS. So it quite happily sits there 15, 20 minutes. You can be flying other models. Then maybe just quickly plug it in, check through your goggles. Have you got any satellites? Yes. Then fly. If no, disconnect the LiPo. It will still be powered on because you haven't connect, disconnected the power brick yet. And it can continue to look for satellites until it finds them. So that can be really, really useful doing it that way. But obviously not all flight controllers have a 4.5 volt. But if it does, perhaps considering connecting your... Um, GPS receiving unit to that particular pad be very very useful. That's method number one. Method number two is going to work perhaps in a few more scenarios and that basically requires you to shield the wires that come out of um, the GPS unit. They can be susceptible to electronic noise, interference, perhaps coming from a VTX or a receiver or in the case of the digital version of this particular quad the wires run right next to the Vista unit and that is known for giving off a lot of electronic interference um, that can affect um, different things like um, GPS units. So that can cause you major problems. So that could be one of the main reasons, and I think in this case that probably was the main reason as to why this wasn't connecting properly, was that, that electronic interference. So, got some handy sort of copper tape, really cheap and easy to, to find. No problem there, it's just like a self-adhesive tape. Bit awkward when you sort of pull the tape off because it's quite thin and easily tears. It's thick on, on, on the backing, but when you pull the backing off, it can be a bit delicate. So be careful with that. Wrap that round the wire. Um, I wrapped it round the um, RX and TX wire and also the 5 volt and ground as much as I possibly could. Then obviously because we've now got a bare copper conductive wire running along the length of the quad, in perhaps a crash or hard manoeuvres, that could move about and touch something and cause a short or another issue. So I wrapped it in this tape here. Now this is kind of like an electrical tape. It's made of like a, a fibre sort of material. 
a bit different from your normal electrical tape but this is often used in um, cars and things like that for wrapping up sort of bundles of cables and things so perfectly usable and really really good tape use it sometimes for wrapping down the um, the wires on the arms of my quads but quite useful to have some of that not very expensive as well or you could just use your trusty electronic tape here make sure you wrap it around all of the um, exposed copper tape and then you're not in any problems you're not gonna have any issues with the um, uh, tape then conducting something or touching something that it shouldn't and with those two things done with the pad now I can power it from a, a brick and with the tape that seemed to work and I got satellites and had no problem when I was flying about no issues no dropouts nothing it flew really nicely and the GPS system worked really really well the satellites remained very high that I had um, sort of hovering above 10 as high as 12 or 13 I think even at one point point. Um, so it did really really well I'm really happy with that so now it's fully working and I can quite happily do a bit further range out the VTX isn't brilliant in this so I'm limited by that but um, if I change the VTX to something a bit better which I might do in the future then I can quite happily fly this a bit further away um, and uh, not have to worry about working my way how to get back home what else could we do in this particular scenario if we tried those two things and perhaps they haven't worked well there's a couple of other things that we could try we could try perhaps putting some of this tape on the underside um, of our GPS system. So on the other side of the GPS, we've got um, our little receiving antenna and perhaps other things that could be causing interference. So if we maybe sort of put some tape underneath that, making sure it's not connecting to anything that could cause issues, maybe put some non-conductive tape on first and then the electrical tape on afterwards, or from other bits and pieces that are near, perhaps on, on the back of the quad, we could sort of put some of the um, this sort of copper tape on that that might help as well possibly possibly not but you know if you if you're looking for solutions then that could be one to try another solution and this probably for most people would be a bit more useful um, if they were running a crossfire system to long range long range you think crossfire I'm using ghost because that's what I've got here um, I have got crossfire and other quads and planes and it works really well like crossfire but this is designed for crossfire you can see the 3D mount there is designed to fit a crossfire antenna, the Immortal T. Um, I've just happened to fit the, um, the little Atto receiver that was a QT or something it's called from version RC for Ghost. And the reason I did that is because Ghost is a 2.4 megahertz system and 2.4 interferes less with GPS systems. Whereas Crossfire, which is 800 and something or 900, um, 868 I think in the UK, I might be wrong, probably. Anyway it's using a lot lower frequency not 2.4 gigahertz so um, that's more likely to cause interference between um, the antenna and also um, the GPS unit so if they're right next to each other that can cause issues so if you want to leave the antenna on the back there then the tape between the two um, could help that could you know, sort out that problem for you or might be more better is to move the antenna from the back to the front and I often think that's a good idea because if you're flying away from yourself like this, you get quite a good reception because the antenna is on the back, they're facing towards you. Obviously, these are horizontal and, and vertical is better, but they're behind you and they're facing towards you. But when you turn around, well, suddenly now the quad's blocking, or can do, if you've got a big LiPo on it, can be blocking the antennas. And that can cause issues. So certainly with short antennas like this. And so if you put the antenna on the front as you're flying away, well, that give you poor... Um, um, poor signal as you're flying away because you're being partially blocked perhaps by parts of the quad but as soon as you turn around it's now facing straight towards you and then your signal increases and you get better signal so perhaps putting the antennas on the front might be worth it certainly if you're using crossfire that could be something that could really help you um, sort out the situation with this particular receiving antenna the, the little GPS unit here the BM180 obviously you could try a different um, GPS unit, the 220 seems to be very popular, and there's some new ones as we mentioned that have come on the market from Maytech and other brands um, that seem to be really, really good quality and are really good at getting um, receiving um, very quickly, receiving the uh, GPS signal very quickly. So that might be something worth doing, but to do that, you then have to modify this 3D printed part, perhaps cutting the edges because this is a small. Um, GPS unit whereas the other ones are slightly larger and wouldn't necessarily fit in this particular 3D printed uh, mount here though I'm sure on Thingiverse if you've got a 3D printer or access to a 3D printing service online 
then you could find yourself a little 3D printed part that would fit um, um, a larger uh, GPS unit like the 220 or one of the newer um, GPS units. So there you go. I think I mentioned the word GPS about two dozen times, but we've got the point. These are probably done, <laughs> and um, it seems to really work really well, and I'm really happy with the results. I was thinking I might have to change this, but now I can leave it as it is, and I can fly this quad, put me, um, me GoPro on there, and, and do some nice sort of longer range flying with that. So really happy. Flies really nicely. So I will leave you with some more flight footage. Um, I've gone on for long enough now. Um, as we said at the beginning, Perhaps like this video, perhaps subscribe if you want to, um, but uh, whatever happens, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your support for the channel, thanks for the comments on the other video, great comments, thanks guys, appreciate that, but thanks so much for watching my content, I will leave you with some more flying footage, and take care and happy flying, bye bye.